Hello everyone, today it's Chef vs Normals taste testing global dishes from around the world with an Easter theme. Some of these are utterly incredible. They're going to have a taste, they're going to try and guess the correct countries. If they don't get it right, closest wins. Should we get dressed for Easter? What? what? Oh. No, we're done with that. The community have suggested it. They said that we take things far too seriously yeah. these days. There we go. Feeling good? I'm going to be honest, surprisingly good. <laughs> <laughs> right, boys. Oh, yes. Please remove your blindfolds for dish number one. Ooh. Um. Oh, Jay, look at this. What? Hang on a sec. Oh. oh. <laughs> Okay, we got like... Does it look like chili con carne? Like sloppy joe vibes. Well, uh, provided some plates, have a taste, see what flavours you're getting, and then see if that will help you identify the country that this dish is from. I think today's going to be fascinating on the basis that we will learn lots, but I think it's going to be quite diff difficult because so much of it is going to be based on the symbolism of Easter, I imagine. You are right, Jay? You know, I don't want to be fussy or anything. <laughs> I think the old costume gag's been done. So Jay, if you need to amend How your outfit your so that you can eat. I thought it was a handicap that might give me a chance to against one. Ebbers. How do we get to Come how on. do we get to you? Boop. I think he's gonna go incredibly limp the moment you do that. I know, I think this is a mistake. Oh my god, those scissors are close. Right. There you go. You're in. Get your head out and then you'll just be a giant Easter egg. Right, hang on a sec. I'm gonna Oh you're gonna rip it. Oh! It's the Renaissance happening. You might, right there. Might look away, you might get flashbacks. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Mama! <laughs> well, while you boys have been doing that, I'm loving lunch. So, talk us through these components. What have you got? So, we've got a nice, like, a nice a bap, a buttered bap. With some onions through it. Mm. And then there's a, a, an oily, meaty mixture. Which is rich, it's spicy, but it's fresh and tangy at the same time. It's kind Ooh. of got a, a, um, an acidity to it. Yeah. Like a, like a, it's not tamarind, but that kind of vibe. T it's it's tomato -y. It's tangy, tomato -y. Yeah. So, the tanginess that you're tasting is provided by coconut vinegar. Any guesses to the meat? Um, pork? It's got, it's very fatty. Correct. When I think Easter, obviously uh, a Christian holiday, so many of the countries I would associate that with would probably be UK, Europe, and I would think going west, whereas this tastes like it's more east. The use of bread in a lot of street food from certain parts of the world, and that particular bread is quite iconic. And I remember having lots of things in similar style bread baps um, somewhere. It's really difficult to talk Ooh. about any of this without giving away some hey. hints and clues. Yeah. Good game. So the coconut vinegar is also called toddy vinegar. The rice is sana, which is a slightly sweet rice, and traditionally is served with coconut bread. I have an idea. Oh. Spice blend wise, Traditionally, it's a pork curry or pork offal curry. Oh, I hate this, it's cocky. Yeah, it could be cocky wrong though, couldn't it? <laughs> How do we do this? You start writing, write the continent first. Right, so are we happy? I'm trying to think of any other neighbouring countries that could be useful. We don't have to be right, we just have to be closer than Oh yeah, this. I thought that. Oh, that's big... a good point. Oh, I forgot, I've never played this game. I don't know the strategy. <laughs> Okay, boys, you've had a think. You've locked in your answers. Please reveal them in three, two, one. The normals have gone for South Africa and Yay! Ebers has gone for the Philippines. What? Which is nowhere near Portugal, so what are you doing? I felt he was said that's where the influence travelled around, but this is my answer. I can tell you, Ebers, that you are absolutely bang on the money with Portugal. No! <laughs> 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 no! This ditch. No! Best game ever. Wait a minute. Oh, oh it's a big. Hang on, that means you guys might be closer yeah. now. Yeah, I'll be closer. This yeah. dish did originate in Portugal, but what you are eating right now is Sorpatel from India. What? Goa specifically. Really? It is literally the trail of Vindaloo as well. It's similar to pork spicy curry from Vindaloo. Yep. I would never have associated a, a, a normal bread roll. But no, what no, I would all, classify as a normal bread roll. Well, traditionally, it's, it could be coconut bread as well. So, when it comes to distance, there's just under a thousand miles in it. Jay and Baz, you're three and a half thousand miles away. Ebers, 2,877. Oh. At least I get the one point. Damn, I thought we had that. Yeah. The coconut vinegar 
And the toddy now makes sense also from kind of Goa Sri Lanka that we learn a lot about as well. So not only excellent for flavour, but also as a preservative. Best game, that best food great. as well as this, yeah. this bit. Well, it. there's three more to go. Let's do round two. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Okay boys, dish number two. Remove your blindfolds in three, two, one. <laughs> what is that? What is going on here? Turn it around, have a look. Is that a... <laughs> is that Mr. Hanky? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunny rabbit made out of meatloaf. Meatloaf, meatloaf caricature. This is also a spectacularly accurate portrayal of what it should look no like. No way. way. So phenomenal job from Kush. Is that, is the it's two, so, is the why is it so cross-eyed? <laughs> Hey! It's a that gala, it's a gala pie. That is another symbol of spring wow. and Easter. So it's a it's a Scottish egg. Oh, Look, wait, how is it ev exactly, wait, Jay? Talk. How is there a long egg? Well, <laughs> like any like any gala pie, I've got to the end, but that's sausagey. Oh, but it's got something deeper going on. I'm not sure I like it. It's is it rabbit? Because it's quite gamey. It has everything we love about a Scotch egg, mm. but without that golden breadcrumb bit, which means the outside becomes a cross between a burger yeah. and a Scotch egg. Yeah, it's got a crispiness to the outside. It's so beef, right? Popular meatloaf comprises of minced beef, onions, breadcrumbs with secret eggs. So the origins of this dish are said to have come from post-war times when those cooking with rations wanted to make a dish a little bit more special around Easter. I mean, it's tasty. It tastes like a burger an wrapped egg in it. around an egg. That's it. You're right. At the time where this was conceived, rabbit was a very sought after meat, but wasn't available. And therefore, this gives the impression of rabbit um, using more affordable and get holdable ingredients. Like there's no big spices or anything in there that would lead you into a, in, into a direction. It's quite and I mean this, I don't mean this in a negative way, it's quite plain because mm -hmm. it is, you know... The flavour comes from the onions, it yeah, comes the beef, from the beef. the onions and the, and the breadcrumbs and the egg. There's nothing else going on. Well, I imagine it would be surrounded by lots of vegetable side dishes and condiments as well, perhaps. A bit like our roast leg of lamb. Mm. It's very simple in its execution, but it's a centrepiece. And that is definitely a piece to put in the centre. Right, boys, time to lock in your answers. Confer if you need to. And we'll get measuring some distances. Answers locked in. Yep. Please reveal them in three, two, one. Malta and Poland. Malta. Malta. Well, we went there once for a weekend, and rabbit was a really big thing. And he said that this was post-war and didn't really wasn't possible when rabbit was in short supply. So that was my logic. Poland. We came at it from slightly different angles. I thought um, Eastern Eastern European. Um, Barry thought Austria, and so we met somewhere slightly in the middle. I can reveal that one of the teams is only 378 Ooh. miles away. Come on, come on, we need this. This dish is Falscher Haas mit Ei. That sounds German. And is from Germany. So Barry and Jamie take the point. Yes! yes. yes. Very, very Fair play. close. German. German. Oh. I mean, German. yeah, now you think now, about the ingredients. Yeah, now, yeah. yeah. Falsche Haas translates to fake or false hair. <laughs> hair as in not rabbit. rabbit. We're not talking about a wig. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, that's a lot of fun. Boop. It's one all. All to play for in round three. Do it. Come on, bring it on. All right, boys, number three. Lift the blindfold in three, two, one. Hey! Whoa! It's a... Wait, what? Wow. Are you feeling okay? What the hell is this? How'd you get the eggs in that? Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Is it weighty? Is, is it weighty? <laughs> Ebers, we provided you a serrated knife if you'd like to cut into it and see what delights behold. <gasps> oh, that's like not what I was expecting. It's like a bun. bun. It's, a, it's a bun within a bun. Cheese and ham. It's like a spiralled cheese and ham bread egg thing. Oh, I get your nose in there. Oh, that's, have to identify. that all suddenly, I'm getting, I'm getting feelings. Oh, what have you done with the egg? Eggers. Trying to work out if the egg is... <laughs> Eggers? <laughs> I want to egg. know what state the egg is, whether it's just decorative or whether they are cooked. Oh, this is an adventure. All right. Oh, oh. oh. OK. OK, it's a... It's so it's a, a it's long, a... slow bake, which is why it loses that colour and cool down equally slowly. OK, boys, so in summary, what do you think you have here? Is it an elaborate cheese and ham sandwich? It looks like ham and cheese for catcher rolled into a spiral and then wrapped around into a ring. It's very delicious. Very. There's so much moisture and steam going on inside of that loaf. The moisture is provided by lard. Like you've almost got a, what looks like a parma ham. Not mozzarella ring. It's more like Swiss, Swiss cheese or Gruyere. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I don't want to give too many clues away, mm. but I'd say it's not quite Swiss, but maybe more West. East. My west, your east. <laughs> <laughs> right, I feel like you've had enough time to think of an answer. If you'd like to scribble on the board, we'll see who's closest. This is an iconic savoury bread dish, baked in a special tin, filled with all those delights, and egg washed for colour before baking. Okay, let's reveal your answers in three, two, one. Normals have gone Spain, Ebers has gone Argentina. Argentina. Oh. That's quite far away from Spain. I With can... an Italian influence. Okay. <laughs> I can confirm that Ben has got it bang on the money. No! No! With his second guess of Italy. Oh, no! <laughs> yes! Yet again! Yes! <laughs> I presume that would be too obvious. I was thinking back to our um, guava tart that was yeah. Italian influence, but went with the miners to like Paraguay at the time. Yeah, it's wrong though, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Hang on a second, Mike. Is Spain closer to Italy than Argentina? <laughs> I believe it is. Damn! Well, Ben, uh, your guess was 7,311 <laughs> miles away. Oh, no. Whereas Jay and Baz, only 855 miles away in comparison. Wow. So, um, I mean, that could come back to bite you at the end, Mr. Bunny Rabbit. This dish is Casa Tieo from Italy. An iconic savoury bread at Easter filled with pecorino romano, di salami, mortadella, prosciutto, pancetta, parmigiano reggiano, uh, and other savoury cheeses. So essentially, a delicious deli board with lard in a baked sandwich. With eggs on top. With eggs on top. <laughs> I mean, I love it. So there's lots of symbolism within this dish, uh, which is usually prepared on Good Friday. Le it's left to rise overnight and baked the following day. The hole in the middle symbolizes the thorn crown of Jesus. The dough strips across the egg on top symbolize the cross. This is hugely significant within Italian traditions and often family recipes are passed down from generations to generations. I love it. Yeah. And I also love how frustrating Ebers finds this game. Ebers, you're in significant bother with that guess, but let's move on to <laughs> round four, where a correct guess could change everything. <laughs> round four, final dish, all to play for. Remove your blindfolds in three, two, one. Ooh, Ooh that's... Not Oh, it's like a bread and butter Ooh. pudding. Yeah, looks caramelly. Mm. It's cheesy and caramelly. And chocolate. Oh, it it is out of the, it. it looks very familiar in some areas, but then there's cheese on top. So it's got lots of fruit in it. Banana, dried fruit. It's pudding-like, although it is topped with cheese. Banana, almonds. Mm. And, and a similar kind of spices that we would think we would associate with like hot cross buns or similar, so it's like cinnamon and, and clove again, maybe. It's not a very flavoursome cheese, is it? It doesn't add anything to it, but it doesn't take anything away. What's it similar to? What could it be? Could the cheese give it away? So traditionally, this dish uses up the stale bread as a usual bread pudding and would feature apples, dates, raisins, apricots, pecans, almonds, pine nuts, walnuts, and soaked in a mulled syrup made from whole cane sugar. 
Is this is a naughty one, Mike, isn't it? Mm. Very it's, cheeky. Yeah, it's it's a very naughty cheeky. one. It's what we would associate with the bread and butter pudding. It's a lit. It's not as um, soft and aerated as maybe we would have more more custard, less bread. This is definitely more bready. So it's like a, almost like a bread pudding as opposed to a bread and butter pudding, mm. I would say. The exact same thing. There are savoury versions yeah. elsewhere, which yeah. include pork loin and sausages. This specific dish has heavily evolved from what was originally an ancient Roman savoury dish, which involved soaking bread in olive oil, water and pasaka, an acidic vinegary drink before layering with herbs and cheese. That has not helped. That's really unhelped me. Oh. All right, boys, it all rides on this. Oh. Please reveal your answers in three, two, one. The normals have gone for Greece with Jamaica in brackets. I Evers has gone for Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica. Somewhere in the West Indies. With the West Indies in brackets. I can confirm oh, no. that one team has guessed 1,633 miles away from this destination. <laughs> the other team have guessed 6,831 miles away from this destination. Neither of you are correct. Yeah. And the country this dish originates from is Mexico. I go! Oh, I so nearly scribbled that. So Ebers is a lot closer in comparison to the normals. Could that sway the results? Because that is a big swing. But our logic made so much sense. Yeah, well, we had lo we had three yeah. different logics. Yeah, we first, like, Jay saw like, the, the curds and went, Canada. Yeah, and then Mike said, whole cane sugar. Yeah. And we were like, what's rum made from? Cane sugar. Good thinking. Yeah, and so then we were like, right, somewhere in the Caribbean, we chose Jamaica. The dish is called Capiro Tada. It originates in the 1640s. So the ingredients have been recorded by the Holy Office of Inquisition and saved this day to the archive. The basic ingredients carry a rich symbolism to the Passion of Christ, and the dish is considered by many Mexican and Mexican-American families as a reminder of the suffering of Christ on Good Friday. The bread represents the body of Christ, the syrup is his blood, the cloves are the nails of the cross, and the cinnamon sticks are the wood of the cross. The melted cheese stands for the Holy Shroud. Well, should we tally up the miles and see who's taking the victory? Okay, boy, it says 1,246 miles in it. Oh. So with a total mile estimation of 12,890, we have Ben, and Jamie and Baz, their total was 11,644. Yes! And therefore, today's winners, congratulations. He's got so much oh. useless knowledge. <laughs> no, and it took me all around the world and back. <laughs> Some absolutely stonking stuff there. Thank you to everyone who got involved with suggesting these dishes. Keep suggesting these global international dishes. We'll keep doing this. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you hit the like button.